Welcome to our lecture online. So now we're going to answer the question, what is pseudo-range? And pseudo-range is a word you'll hear a lot whenever you're dealing with GPS. So let's read it together. It says that the pseudo-range is the pseudo-distance between the receiver and the satellite. So there's an important distinction here. It is the receiver and a satellite, because there's a lot of satellites up there, Usually we can track as many as 10, sometimes 11 or 12 satellites. And so therefore it's the pseudo distance, not the real distance, not the geometric distance, but an initial calculated distance ignoring the clock errors. So here's the key. The clock on the SV, on the satellite, SV stands for Space Vehicle, it, well, it uses an atomic clock up there. It's an atomic clock. And so therefore, it's extremely accurate. The errors, two nanoseconds per year. So it has an extremely high accuracy. As opposed to the receiver, which has what we use, uh, what we call a quartz oscillator, which is very cheap. It's not as good. And it can be off 10 nanoseconds per day, and sometimes it can be a lot worse. For good receivers, we use temperature adjusted oscillators. In other words, the oscillation changes by temperature and so when we sense the temperature we make an adjustment for that in order to have a smaller error. But nevertheless, 10 nanoseconds per day is a lot worse than 2 nanoseconds per year. So what we can do initially is assume that the clock on the satellite is absolutely correct. Of course, we do need to make some adjustments for it because it's not going to be exactly the same as the exact GPS time and we'll tell you more about that later but definitely the receiver clock is going to be off and for every nanosecond you're off by a foot 10, 10 nanoseconds is 10 feet and in some cases the accuracy is far less than that and so therefore you can have much larger errors so let's assume then that the range between the receiver and the satellite is mainly offset by the error in the clock of the receiver so that means that if we assume that all the clocks on the SVs, on the satellites, are good, then the error is common between the range readings, or the range calculations, between the receiver and the satellite. So if the error is common, we can just call it a common error. And at that point, we end up with four unknowns when we're trying to find the distance to the satellite, or the distance between the satellite and the receiver. X, Y, and Z, which are the three components of the space unknown, right? And then we have the correction on the time. So if we assume that we know the error, or if we assume that we don't know the error, we can then look for the error, but we can assume, most likely, that the error will be the same for every range measurement between the satellite, between the, the receiver and any one of the satellites. And so therefore, we can then say that all those ranges that we calculate between the receiver and the various satellites, those are all then called pseudo ranges because they all have the same error. And by definition, since they all have the same error, we're going to call them all pseudo ranges. And then with the combination of the pseudo ranges, if we have at least four of those, we can then use four equations and four knowns techniques to calculate for X, Y, and Z, which gives us the exact position in space or the exact position of the receiver and we can find the error that way we can then then we can incorporate the error and then instead of having a pseudo position for the for the receiver we can then have a much more exact position once we also know the error the clock error in the receiver so that's why we use the word pseudo range it, it, it gives us the initial position of the receiver or at least the initial distances between the receiver and the satellites based upon assuming we have a common clock error and then once we can remove the clock error by solving the information from four satellites combined then we can solve for the four unknowns and then we can get a much more accurate position of the receiver then we can get something that's very close to the geometric uh, distance or the true distance between the receiver and the satellites and that is how it's done